What is going on guys? Radio Graffiti here, and today I want to talk to you guys about The Boys, episode 4 and 5. Now I will be going into spoilers, so if you have not watched these episodes, you will be spoiled. With that being said, episode 4, this might just be the best episode of the entire season so far. It gives us everything we love about The Boys, and who better represents The Boys than Homelander. Homelander messing around with humans. We love to see that kind of stuff, or just anybody in general. People are so scared of Homelander because he's so intimidating. And Anthony Starr, we all know he's fantastic as Homelander. He's absolutely excellent. I think Homelander has been carrying this show on his back. If it weren't for him, I don't think I'd even still be watching this show as it is. But he is just so entertaining. He is so great. His acting is just, it really pulls you in. You feel absolutely terrified for everybody that's near him. Even if you feel like they somewhat deserve it, you still feel terrified about how far he's going to go. You can never be too sure with this guy. And sure enough, in this episode, he goes to visit the scientists that experimented on him when he was a baby. And he, one by one, sort of murders them all. In a very slow, menacing, terrifying, and very intense way. I just thought all that stuff was just fantastic. But that's not the only highlight of the episode. We also get Starlight and Firecracker. Starlight beats a shit out of Firecracker. And boy, was it awesome to see. Finally, people stop talking and actually put their hands into somebody's face. Wow, that was great to see. And also, Huey's storyline is starting to get more interesting. We see his dad laying in bed. He gets the Compound V. He opens his eyes. But we'll talk about that when we get to episode 5. But... TV storyline, actually pretty interesting, seeing him forgive A-Train for what happened to Robin. Also, Butcher becomes a much more interesting character. He finally stops being a little pussy about his dead wife's rape baby and starts becoming the badass that we all know and love. But we will also talk more about that in episode 5. But as for episode 4, seeing him get his hands dirty and get in a fight with that weird Mr. Fantastic guy. I believe his name is Ezekiel. Yeah, that was all pretty good stuff. And Frenchie's storyline, looks like he's finally getting rid of his little boyfriend so he can finally stop with that shit. It wasn't entertaining in the first place. But yes, episode four seems to be a high improvement on the season. My main problems with episodes one through three was is that there was just too many boring subplots going on that wasn't very interesting. And it seems here all those boring subplots are starting to either get fizzled out or they're escalating to what they were wanting to get to all along. But... As for episode 5, Gustavo Fring is back. I believe his name in the show is Stan Edgar, but we all know him as Gustavo Fring from Breaking Bad, aka one of the best TV shows ever made, but I digress. He's back for, it looks like, only just this episode. I know a lot of us are probably wondering, where'd he go? And then the rest of us were wondering, hey, he's in this show? Because we haven't seen this guy since, I believe, season 2? I believe it was season 2 when he went to jail. I can't remember why it's been so long ago. But yes, he is back. And it's just nice to see him interact with all these characters. He's had a lot of great lines in the episode. My favorites were him asking for a towel before he sat in their truck. And then also his comment about how he's surprised that the boys had made it this long. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. How have they made it this long? Considering they're just normal dudes going up against super-powered villains. All of that was pretty hilarious. With the whole, you know, making fun of Marvel, showing the presentation of just this giant map full of upcoming movies. And my favorite part of the episode was a little shot of the Batman. I love the Batman. Don't get me wrong. But it was so fucking funny when they were like, yeah, we're going to make this next movie and um, there's going to be a whole sequence where it's just pitch black for 12 minutes. And also there's a line from A-Train where he's talking about, yeah, we went and did reshoots from the reshoots. So now it's the most expensive TV show ever. There were just so many great jabs at Marvel and DC alike. It was hilarious. Because it is pretty ridiculous how much these superhero movies just have this gigantic plan and these ridiculous titles. It can get pretty absurd. Even though I love superhero movies, but even I can admit, yeah, they would get kind of carried away with just having way too many of them. And then, yeah, another comment they made was about the reboots. It's been a whole year since my last movie, so now it's time for a reboot. Boy, is that ever true. We also get some funny interactions with our characters and these little chickens that are all V'd up. 
We see these little crazy sheep flying around with blood all over them. They're trying to kill our heroes. All that stuff was just pretty funny and interesting. I really enjoyed that part. Although I have to pause for a minute on all my praise for the boys. I have to point out something. Why is it that these beat up animals can tear right through a bull? They can tear right through animals. They can literally fly in the sky. Rip, we see them rip people apart. But yet somehow they can't get inside of a barn. Our heroes go run into a barn to seek safety from these maniac animals. But yet somehow they can't break through the barn. And okay, you can say, okay, well maybe you know the barn's made of kryptonite or something. You know, maybe they just didn't feel like it. Okay, well then why didn't Victoria Newman just pop out of their heads? That's the problem when you got a super-powered person with you. They did it with Starlight where they're like, oh, well, you know, she's got a... Starlight's got a limp dick with her powers. She can't use them. And it's like, okay, that's never been explored in the show, but hey, whatever you say, writers, Starlight can't use her powers because, you know, it'd be too easy to have two super-powered beings against a bunch of animals. But hey, whatever. I'm sure next episode she'll be perfectly fine, so whatever. But besides that, we also get... Homelander slowly turning Ryan into little Homelander Jr. He gets off-brand Joss Whedon over there, and he gets all slapped up by his girl. And then Ryan enjoys it. Like I said, Butcher just needs to kill this little fucker. He's going to be nothing but a problem. There is no getting him away from Homelander. As long as Homelander is still alive, that kid is going to be a problem. And at this point, I feel like even if Homelander is dead, he's already doing so much damage to Ryan. I mean, he's literally made him murder somebody before. Granted, it was an accident, but still, he killed somebody. So I feel like Homelander's just putting too many seeds in his head. He's just becoming too much like Homelander at this point. I don't know if you can save him. I know it sounds harsh because he's a kid, but or however old he is, he sounds really weird. His voice literally sounds broken. And then the episode ends with Butcher kidnapping Victoria Newman's little boyfriend, and he wants him to make a virus. Which, I've heard some pretty interesting theories about this, because some people are thinking that because we know Butcher is dying in the show. Becca appears every now and then over his shoulder. But then he also has Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Some people are speculating that maybe Jeffrey Dean Morgan is also in Butcher's head. Which is a very interesting theory. Because we never see anyone else in the show interact with Jeffrey Dean Morgan besides Butcher. But it's like, who is this guy? Why is he just fantasizing about some random guy? You know, just dreaming about this made up guy. Is he a Supernatural fan as well? Does he love Sam and Dean's dad? Or maybe he's a Walking Dead fan and he loves Negan. I don't know. I don't know why he'd be dreaming about Jeffrey Dean Morgan, but I think it's an interesting theory. Because he's always with Butcher, and he kind of just pops out of nowhere sometimes. Like, how the hell did he get all the way out to that barn? We'll see if that's a true theory when we get further into the season. And also, the big highlight of the episode that everyone's going to be talking about is Huey and his dad. They have a pretty emotional storyline where Huey's dad, I'm just going to call him Simon Pegg, because that's the actor's name. Simon Pegg goes running through the hospital. He's gotten V from the last episode. And Huey's mom is hella suspicious. Because why does she just randomly shoot him up with compound V without even consulting Huey about it at all? That's a pretty crazy thing to do. Especially if she knows the side effects that can come from V, where it just makes you crazy and just... No good can come from somebody who just got superpowers five minutes ago. Like, they're gonna kill somebody. That's kind of the whole point of the show. So I'm sure she knows that. So it's almost like she set him up to die or to kill other people, which is kind of dumb because it's like, well, he's probably going to kill you. What makes you think you're so safe? But yeah, storyline is finally getting interesting. It looks like it's now concluded. I'm interested to see what happens in the next episode, what's going to happen with Huey and his mom now that his father passed away. It was a very emotional scene where he gets to say goodbye to his dad. But it's also like, dude, because you gave your dad compound V or your mom gave your dad compound V, he's now going to hell because he just murdered like four or five people so good job on that you getting to say goodbye to your dad now resulting in him burning in hell for all eternity so that was a little fucked up and twisted but hey whatever still it was a pretty emotional storyline and it was a huge highlight of the episode Simon Pegg was fantastic it was kind of funny seeing him just walk right through people and tear them open and they just instantly die it's so fucking crazy and that's why we love this show we're just these absolutely absurd crazy deaths that can kind of come out of nowhere sometimes and they're just so cartoonish that it's hilarious but yes episode four and five of the boys i'm really enjoying this season so far episodes one two and three i think were a bit of a slow start but right now i think we're off our feet we're flying in the air and we're good to go 
I'm interested to see where the rest of the episodes go. I don't know how many we have left. I believe it'd probably be about eight, but I'm not 100% sure. So three episodes left, if that's true. Hopefully there's more than that because we waited a long time for this. And I know we probably won't get the next season until, God, probably 2026 at the earliest. So I don't want this show to end. It's a huge highlight of my weeks along with House of the Dragon season two. Those two TV shows are keeping me going right now. They're just so fantastic. It's, it's just great to have good TV to look forward to, you know? There's nothing like coming home from work and saying, oh, at least I have some good television to look forward to. Make sure to look forward to the days, you know? But yeah, anyway, that's enough of that. What do you guys think about The Boys season four so far? Did you like episode four and five? Or do you think I'm tripping and that episodes one, two, and three were so much better? Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. And what do you think is going to happen in episode six? I'm very interested to see where the storyline goes with Huey and his mom but also what Butcher ends up doing with his virus. Is he finally going to be able to kill some of these soups? We will find out. But yeah, that's all I got for the day, and I will see you guys later.